a, a new thing for us in terms of graphics. It uh, puts as much information in front of the operator on both touch screens in the meter bridge and OLEDs in the uh, fader area. Uh, so the operator really uh, has a lot of visual information uh, in, in, front of, uh, in front of them and uh, uh, makes the control, the parameters are all there uh, right in front of the operator and the, and the controls associated with them are right there. So, uh, and the surface is fairly programmable. So if you want to see a certain set of audio functions in front of you, uh, accessible via soft controls, you program the board to be that way. And uh, things are color-coded, th it's, it's very clear which functions uh, are which. Uh, the meter bridge uh, with its uh, touch screens, the touch screen as opposed to having just one screen that's touch, all the screens in a 64 meter bridge are touch screens, so as soon as you hit the set function or the attention button on a channel, then boop, right up in the meter bridge, that's the touch screen where you're going to be making adjustments. Uh, and people are very used to touch screens these days. They're used to seeing EQ curves on screen as opposed to a sea of knobs. So, uh, so it, it really becomes more intuitive and quick and easy to use. Out there in the real world, I know especially in TV news, the move has been so much to doing automation, to reducing the number of people who are in a control room to maybe not even having a live body in an audio booth anymore. Mm -hmm. How does that change some of the requirements that you're seeing, especially at the, at the call letter station level? Well, um, if you have a station that is firmly uh, committed to automation and uh, they are uh, happy with uh, the functions that a, a lower level console provides, then I, I have seen a shift toward uh, toward those style boards uh, that don't have quite the horsepower that some of the bigger boards used to have. But but on the other hand, you you, you have a, a a number of stations that may run automation on their noon news, but still have a board up on their six o'clock news and a number of other stations that have special event programming, election night coverage would be, you know, a big one, um, where you have IFBs and, and uh, remotes coming in from all over the place that you need a, a live board op for. So in those cases, you, you want a board with the horsepower that, that the, the board op can drive, but you still want one that's completely controllable through, uh, through automation. And all of the Wheatstone boards use what we call our ACI, which is Automation Control Interface. They all speak the same language, so that if, if one of the automation vendors of Ross, Grass Valley, Sony, writes an interface for a Wheatstone board, um, it's pretty much universally usable across the line. So really it just depends on the, the level of functionality that the station wants to preserve uh, in terms of which board they might choose.